going on guys victor here welcome back to the channel if you guys are new welcome aboard if you're not welcome back today we're doing something i've been wanting to do a very long time and that is catch a golden tile fish but not just any golden tile fish one on a jig tony right here invited us on his boat he's rigging up we're gonna get on some golden tiles hopefully right yes we are we got his brother bach right there uh -huh. say what's up what's up and so these fish live in very deep water. You're talking about anywhere from 600 to 1,000 foot plus. And catching them on a jig is not going to be an easy feat. You're fighting against conditions. When you have 900 to 1,000 feet of line out, there's a lot of drag, right? So you guys have been seeing the slow pitch setup, so I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. Let's get our jigs down there. See that big jig? Ooh, I think it's a 550 from JYP, JYG. So we're dropping uh, 600 gram jigs, 500, 700 gram jigs, which is the equivalent to over a pound. You need a lot of lead to get down there, not just to get down there, but to stay up and down vertically as possible. Because that's the whole thing with jigging, is you want your line as vertical as possible, and you want to feel the bite. If you have a bunch of scope or bow in your line, you're not going to feel anything. Yeah, they're thugs. They brawl. The closer you get them to the surface, the more sunlight they see, the harder they want to dig. They want to get back down to their safety and uh, where it's dark. Oh, buddy, Catch we're it. on! We're on a golden tile! <laughs> yeah, buddy. Are you kidding me? They brawl, Tim. I told you. I told you. They hit and it's Holy done. smokes. Okay, guys, second drop down. 950 feet of water. 600 gram jig. And, uh, you know, we got out here... We all got a little wet, pretty dicey conditions. Never looks like it on the GoPro, but we're on, baby. You're in for a battle, so yeah. it's take a little while. I got 900 feet to go. So these golden tile fish, they live down there in the mud. And we're just dragging this big area full of mud on the screen. You know, jigging in 900 feet versus 200 feet is a lot different and a lot harder. You can't really feel that much down there. We are about halfway through this fight right here, and <laughs> Tim goes, Tim goes, Vic, they're gonna brawl. And I was like, no way. This giant golden tile fish down there, 900 feet of water, I didn't think they were gonna fight that much, but when I say my jig stopped, I thought I snagged bottom. Um, we're fishing mud, and these fish live in the mud. They bury themselves in there. So his first instinct is when he feels that tension pulling him up, he wants to get back down there just like a group or a snapper wants to get back down in a cave or the wreck. And uh, just very consistent head shakes throughout the whole fight. I'm stoked. This is going to be my first ever tile fish, let alone on a jig. I got color. I got color. You know, reeling it up with a fish on is a lot faster and more fun than reeling in just a jig. That's a, a healthy one. Yeah, he is. Nice. Woo! First of all, thank you so much. Beautiful gaff shot. And check that out. That golden tile fish devoured a jig in 900 feet of water. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. You guys see that they're shaped they almost look like they should live in the mud. He's got this big protruding mouth. He looks like he just buries himself in there. And, um, you know, I'm always amazed at what can live in the ocean in such depths that actually has colors. This looks like a, a nice tropical fish you'd see on the reef. Not something that would live in 800 feet of water in the mud. Got him with both hooks. 600 gram Johnny Jigs. Shout out to the Pompano boys at home. And this is an Ocean's Legacy elementus this is a deep jigging rod you guys see it's much stiffer than the normal slow pitch stuff we fish and this is a bucket list fish for me i couldn't ask for a, a better thing a better golden tile for my first one to be on the jig than this when we're doing this i drop down the jig 950 feet of water and i can't imagine it moving very much down there so i'm basically just lifting my rod tip like three or four feet and I think with all that stretch of the braid, that jig might only be moving six, eight inches. But when that jig gets in front of that golden tile fish's face, he pounces on it. Whether it's an act of aggression or he's actually trying to eat it, I'd imagine them to be very territorial fish. So then I'll keep doing this. I'll do like 10 or 15 jigs, and then I'll let out maybe 10, 15 feet more of line so I can maintain my position on the bottom. Because if I don't do that, I'll be jigging, my jig's gonna start scoping up more and more and more as we drift. We constantly gotta check to feel for the bottom. 
Bach just hooked up on a big one. Will this be our first golden tile too? This is my first golden tile. Right back in. Take your time, take your time. When he gives you, you crank. That's a big one. Take your time. So my fish right. did not pull nearly as try much not, as this try fish. Try not to lift the rod, just crank. When you lift the rod, do it slow, you crank. Is this his crank. first slow pitch fish ever? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I feel bad. Wow. What a good fish. I had fish. a feeling he was going to get a big one. All right, guys, golden tile fish number two. First one for Bach. This is going to be a big one. I guess 100 feet away. Oh, that's a stop. Oh, oh. oh, oh my oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> Jeez. Oh! Oh, oh my God, that thing. Oh my gosh! Way to go, brothers! Nice. Julie Venom, 540 grams. Not bad for the first slow fish, huh? Nope, nope. You guys, that fish dwarfs mine. Look at this thing. It's a giant. Hello, and welcome aboard. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see yours in the cooler yet, though. Not yet. Not yet. All right, golden tile number three. Fuck, did it again. Ow. Hip size. Though. Hip size. Ooh. Same one. Nice. Oh Same my as yours, gosh. Yeah, chili venom strike 540. Number two. That's it. work. Number two for Bach. Number three of the day. Okay, you gotta tell us the secret. What's the secret, Bach? Secret B for first timer. <laughs> 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 At least he's honest. <laughs> they got some huge pupils, don't they? Yeah, zoom in on that mouth. Good lord. Yeah, they, they got a gnarly mouth. They got some teeth for sure. So the tile fish that we've gotten today, I'm still new to this, but uh, these are all quality tile fish. Even the smallest one we got today is a big tile fish. Um, the pictures that I've seen of most people getting them, they average like three to five pounds. And I think that there's probably some smaller ones down there looking at our jigs, but I think they probably have to be like a minimum size to really inhale that jig. So you're kind of fishing for those big fish, which is nice. You're kind of eliminating all those small bites because it'd be kind of anticlimactic to pull up a three pound golden tile on the jig when there's these things living down there. Fish number four, except Tony's cheating, he's got cyborg out, he's got the legs to throw. Another nice one. Yeah, baby! Can't complain about that. We all got our, three people on the boat got their first golden tile today. Yeah! Woo! Tony with his first ever golden tile on the jig. Well, that's probably going to be a wrap. That is our fourth golden tile. And you're only allowed to keep one per person. But I am so stoked. We got four solid golden tiles. Number one, two, three. And number four. And number four. Right, the smallest of them all. That's the best part. The best part was me, Tony, and Buck. This was our first golden tiles, and all three of us our first golden tiles on jigs. I got it, I got it. That's the big boy from the day, right there. Incredible. Buck has no idea how lucky he is. <laughs> He's got two, <laughs> including this bad boy. It's the next day, golden tile fish. I actually preferred to leave it on ice overnight because they're they're mushy fish when you first catch them. You gotta let them firm up on the ice. It's gonna make the filleting process a lot better. Let that meat kind of relax. And I did scale this thing because I do want to eat it with the skin on. Very much like a snapper, have very delicious skin. And I'm also gonna harvest the head. You know, one, one thing I really respect about, you know, other cultures is they're a lot less wasteful than us Westerners. He says the difference between a white man and an Asian man is one flays his fish and one eats it with the bones on. 
And that's honestly the way it should be. It's not a racist thing at all. You should really give the fish the respect it deserves. I'm using an eight inch Dexter flexible filet. Go right here, all through that head meat. Down to the tail. We're gonna start a knife on the spine. Look at that first reveal. Gorgeous meat. This is why this fish is so sought after. Break through the pin bones, just like that. Pin bones connect the rib cage to the flush. Let that knife glide right over that rib cage. Bam. Beautiful piece of golden tilefish right there. Let's see if there's anything in his stomach. Ooh! Oh, you know what that is. Come on, what is it, babe? Squid. Yep. It's gotta be squid. Yeah. Holy moly! Whoa. What is that? Is that a lancet fish? I was gonna say it. Is that what they're called? <gasps> a baby lancet fish? Is that what they're called? It looks like it, doesn't it? I think a, a lancelet or, or or fish. Oh, maybe. That's wild looking. Never seen one of those before. <gasps> what is that? Oh my gosh. <gasps> it looks like a. It's got the shape of it a pompano like or something. It looks like something that was in um, Finding Nemo. Yeah. It's got a very round, silvery body. <gasps> is that an octopus? Oh my gosh. A baby octopus. Literally. Bring it back down. It literally. Looks, it its legs better. A baby octopus. More octopus. Yeah. Oh, octopus have ink. Yep, they do. I don't know what that is. It's an octopus. Another octopus. Those, another baby octopus. One. Okay. Those are its um, tentacles. This almost looks like. <gasps> oh my gosh. What? Uh, it looks like a. a Sponge. Yeah, some type of sponge or something. You guys comment below what you think this is. Here's another long looking lancet fish. Kind of looks like that might be, or an eel. You guys saw the size of that jig that I caught that fish on. It was about this big. Look at the size of the things that he's eating down there. First golden tile fish, first time examining its stomach. Pretty damn cool. I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. For our fish stock, we're gonna start out with our aromatics. I'm gonna get a little oil in my pan that I'm gonna make the fish stock in, okay? It's just vegetable oil. I got a mixture of ginger, garlic, and lemongrass. It doesn't have to be neat, it doesn't have to be fancy because we're just extracting the flavor from these aromatics into our broth, okay? We're gonna go and lightly fry them. We're gonna go in with some Roma tomatoes. Tonight's meal is all about the scraps. So we got the fish head, we have the backbone of the fish, and we have the collars. Tony, as he would tell me, said these are the most flavorful parts of the fish, which I agree, just like with chicken or beef, usually the most flavor is in the bony areas. There's going to be so much meat that comes off of all of this, you guys wouldn't believe it. We're gonna have seven people here for dinner tonight, and I'm gonna make the entire meal just from these scraps. So let's go. I'm gonna add my fish head. I'm gonna add the fish collar as well as the backbone of the fish into my pot. I'm gonna add enough water to cover all of this. We're gonna bring this up to a boil and then simmer it. Unlike chicken stock, fish stock does not take very long to extract the flavor and you basically just wanna cook it enough until your fish is cooked and it comes right off of the bone. So the stock is done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our fish out of the stock and you're gonna see that it's gonna fall apart. So I'm gonna try to grab as big a piece as possible. We're gonna have to go through all of this. Uh, I'm all done. <laughs> We're gonna have to go through all this and extract all of the soft flesh from the waist. And it doesn't have to be golden tilefish. You could do this with snapper, grouper. I'm sure you could do it with almost any fish. It's the most common to do it with scaly fish though. So I pulled everything solid as much as I could out of our stock. Now we're left with this delicious and rich stock. We're gonna put through our sieve right here. There is your fish stock. 
which we're gonna use in our soup in a little bit. So now, this stuff is super hot. I recommend wearing gloves. I'm not afraid of touching it. It's just really hot. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go through it and pick off all of the meat. And you're gonna be very surprised at how much golden tilefish flesh is in all of this, just from the backbone, the collar, and the head. This is also the perfect time. If you ever wanted to do a jaw mount with a fish, you wanna first make it into a fish head soup, you can take the jaw and reassemble it. I got a pot right there, sauteed some shallots. We're gonna go in with our stock now. I'm gonna add in some lemongrass and kefir leaves. So I haven't really seasoned our stock. So what I'm gonna do is for our salinity, we're gonna go in with a little soy. We're also gonna do a little fish sauce, savory and salty. For sweetness, we're gonna go in with some palm sugar. We gotta add some flavor, so we're gonna do a little red curry paste. We're also gonna add a little lime juice for acidity. So now that we got our salty, our sweet, our sour balanced out, we're gonna go in with some shiitake mushrooms, as well as some chopped bok choy, baby bok choy, and Chinese broccoli. So this is all of the fish that I got off of the bone, the collar, and the head. That's a lot of meat that would just normally go to waste in a canal. And it's gonna go back into our soup now. So we got our soup. I think I went a little heavy with our noodles, but it's all right. They expanded a lot. Yeah, they got pretty, pretty dang big, huh? You're gonna have noodle soup tonight. Mm. I like it. I think the flavor is really good. I wish I had more for all these guys, but um, what I really wanted to show you guys with this video was that we could have a big meal. We got seven people at the table off of the scraps of one fish. I still have all the fillets in the fridge. Vic says he didn't make enough, but these bowls are probably bigger than they look. They, they hold a lot of food. Mine was piled high, so. You think about fish head soup like, oh, that's kind of funky. There's nothing funky about this. It's just really good, tasty soup. Everything in it just, it, it just tastes so good. It's. It's amazing. I, I love soup and I'm always excited to see the different soup Vic, Victor cooks because it makes me want to try to level up my soup game. You're you're digging into a bowl and every bite is something different. You get the mushrooms, you get the noodles, you get the fish, and it's all super flavorful. And it was, a uh, like my dad said, fish head soup isn't something you hear too often, but it is, it is a really good, Really good way to cook fish if you if you have the time, I guess. Flavors, it's a very exotic dish, I would say. Packed with different flavors. Good soup, for sure. Well done. It has so many beautiful things in it. It feels like it's really healthy for us, but it also tastes super good. I just, I love it. Do not turn your nose up to fish head soup. It might sound a little strange to you, but it is so, so good. I feel like it's something that a lot of people don't utilize, and they don't utilize an entire fish, and this is the best way to respect your catch, is to really use the whole catch, and I mean, an entire dinner made out of the scraps of the fish. It's really, really delicious as well. After thinking about what I said, this soup is beyond description. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you work really hard pulling all that meat out of the head, and when you get the little pieces, I never had golden tile before, and these little pieces of meat that came out of the head are delicious. Thank you guys so much for watching. Big thank you to Tony for taking us out. He also made a authentic Vietnamese hot and sour soup. I'm excited to see what he made. Catch you guys in the next one.